Hello and welcome to the AICT PCR Virtual Symposium 2021. I'm Dr. Azari Rosman, Senior Consultant Cardiologist from the National Heart Institute, Malaysia. And it's an honor for me to chair this co chair this session on renal denervation in the real world. And it's about performance in high risk groups. My distinguished co chair is Professor Tung Dao Wang. Professor Wang, how do you do? International Cardiologist from Taiwan National University College of Medicine. For the next 15 minutes, we'll be discussing renal denervation and its position as device based therapy for uncontrolled hypertension. We'll also be touching on its current recommendations and the position statements on RDN by various organizations. As a reminder, hypertension, as we all know it, impacts on cardiovascular mortality and mobility. Here, you can see that even 5 to 10 millimeters reduction in blood pressure and systolic blood pressure can cause significant drop in major cardiovascular events, such as stroke and heart failure and ischemic heart disease. Indeed, this is a trial which involves a large number of individuals, over 640,000 individuals. But just to compare the earlier trial, which involved about 240,000 individuals, this was done in 2014. And you can see that the cardiovascular events that were also reduced significantly in the region of about 40 to 30% uh, also are similar most profoundly is a reduction in stroke and heart failure. On the left, you can see reductions in stroke and heart disease, heart failure, uh, and combinations of stroke and coronary heart disease, and so on, including most importantly, cardiovascular death. So really, it is very important for us to control this very common risk factor, which is hypertension. Um, if you look at the next slide, renal denervation has been around since 2008, and it has been proven over the years in real world studies, as well as some of the trials, that it does reduce blood pressure. Here we can see significant real world pressure reductions over a period of three years after renal denervation involving systolic blood pressure in office, as well as 24 ambulatory blood pressure monitoring. The significant reductions are by the factor of what 16.5 millimeters of mercury uh, and in the office of about 8.8 .8 millimeters of mercury. So these are important because even as we've mentioned earlier on, small reductions in blood pressure can actually impact in terms of cardiovascular reduction in mortality. And this is about 13%. So let's move on to the Spiral HTN Global Clinical Program. This is the registry which looks at patients who have undergone renal denervation over a period of time. And it started in 2012 with the HTN3 using the new spiral flex catheters. Now, these catheters are more refined, they are more trackable, and they're able to deliver energy over four poles, quadripolar catheters. And subsequently, the GSR program has recruited about 3,000 individuals. Additionally, in March this year, it is going to recruit another 2,000 individuals. And of interest, and you can see on the slide here, is the spiral on med trial. This results are expected to be announced uh, towards the end of the year. And this is important because it involves individuals who have undergone renal denervation, um, but yet continued on their hypertensive medications. Now compare this to the previous trials that have actually discontinued medications uh, and patients have undergone renal denervation. This is interesting because many of all of these patients continue medications and yet have uncontrolled blood pressure. So we'll look at what these trials show in the near future. So based on the totality of evidence, we've got many bodies, many organizations, and in our part of the world also, we have associations prior to the changes in their relative uh, respective guidelines have made updates. And these updates are regarding renal elevation's role as device-based therapy for hypertension, which is uncontrolled despite med med uh, medications. So these include various uh, bodies such as European Society of Hypertension, the International Society of Hypertension, and for our part of the world in South Asia, the ARED, the Asian Consortium, Consortium on Renal Denervation, of which Pro Wang is actually a member of. Now, <clears throat> this is the ESC paper, which describes the role of renal denervation for individuals uncontrolled with multiple medications. And the next slide will show you the ASEAN Renal Denervation Consortium, the ARDEC recommendation. 
So this recommendation makes mention of individuals who are suitable or are recommended to undergo renal renovation. Patient selection, proper pre-procedural workout, and patient characteristics are important in determining the success of renal denivation. Prof. Kazumi Kario, who is a member of the ARDEC and also somebody who does renal, renal denivation, has put together an interesting chart to identify individuals in whom the likelihood of success for renal denivation may be higher. These are individuals who have high sympathetic drive. As you can see in the yellow box, these are individuals who have nocturnal hypertension, sleep apnea syndrome, and so on. But it also nicely identifies a group of individuals less likely to respond to renal denivation. And these are individuals who are in the older age group with less compliant vessels and especially systolic hypertension, in particular isolated systolic hypertension. So we move on to our next speaker, which is Prof. Wang, who will now illustrate from his experience, the types of patients that he has, how to identify individuals, and his experience in using renal denivation to manage uncontrolled hypertension in Taiwan. Prof. Wang has elegantly put forward a case discussion, and I would like now to invite Prof. Wang to give you your illustration of how effective renal denivation has been in your experience and give us some pointers on how you have managed this individual. Over to you, Prof. Wang. So thank you, Professor Rasmus, for your very kind introduction. I always learn things from your talk because that's yeah, a very detailed introduction. And I would like to also share to our audience that uh, in the recently published a step trial that demonstrated the nine millimeter mercury blood pressure differences can translate to 26% relative risk reduction, just as you show in the overall risk, the overall risk, but the but primary cardiovascular event, the mag this magnitude is quite significant. I mean, compared to the Caucasian patient, Asian patient seems get more benefits from blood pressure reduction. And also um, in this meta-analysis that done together with Professor Cario, we compared the Asian patient versus Caucasian patient in the GSR population. We noticed that, um, well, with response to the renal denervation, it seems that Asian people get better blood pressure reduction compared to Caucasian. The difference is about five minimum mercury difference. So I think that's another very important issue I want to share with all, our audience. Well, we recommended RDNI to the acronym to include the five sectors of patients that consider as a suitable candidate for renal denervation. The R means renal resistance. The D means damage. That means the high risk patient, they may get more benefits. And N and I means intolerance, the patient preference issue. We have to uh, put weight on that. And the two means secondary hypertension, but it's that being treated, but still resist uncontrolled that we can still consider renal innovation. I think that's what I can share with the audience about um, what candidates could to be considered for renal innovation. And right, right now I would like to show this case because this case following the intolerant, uh, the, the non uh, non-adherent patient. This gentleman, 42 years old, uncontrolled hypertension, be treated with two antihypertensive drugs. But he, he, well, he said, well, the compli compliance is not so good. He felt some uh, side effects. And he come to me because he read a reports about renal innovation. He want to undergo this procedure. And so his self-referral patient, and we do that before that, we, we recommend the RAS. The R means renal angiography, non-invasive before the procedure, because we have to know the anatomy in detail. And ambulatory proper share to confirm his hypertension. And S means secondary hypertension. In this case, there's no evidence of secondary hypertension. The aldosterone renal ratio is normal. And the pre-renal pre denervation CT angiography showed a very interesting finding. There are two accessory renal arteries here. And and as we know that the renal denervation we recommend relatively comprehensive. There are still nerve around this uh, accessory renal artery. And as you can see in the pink color, the, that artery supplying the lower pole of the kidney, but it comes from the upper part uh, above the renal artery. So if you don't have this kind of imaging, you may miss that artery. And these two arteries are all uh, well, greater than three millimeter in diameter. So that could be assessed 
by the spiral caster. And we also do the renal denervation in these two accessory renal arteries and the bilateral renal arteries. So that demonstrates the, well, the superiority of spiral caster compared with the other devices. And this case showed a very dramatic blood pressure reduction before the treatment, you can see the average uh, 24 hour blood pressure is 160, 109. But one month after the intervention, the blood pressure reduction is about 44 in systolic. So that's quite dramatic. And in my experience, about 20% of patients got this kind of dramatic responses and 80% of them got response. And four months later, similar extent of re uh, response. And the follow-up CT eight months later showed no evidence of renal artery impairment. And also his renal function improved after the blood pressure being controlled. So I think this is a typical case to show. And also this case got a prior coronary events. So it's a high-risk patient, it's young, the blood pressure burden could be high in the future. So it's an ideal candidate and it also shows very good dramatic blood pressure reduction. So that's what I would like to share with you. So wonderful, so, uh, Prof Wang. I mean, you've illustrated two important points, which is the importance of a pre-procedural investigation, which outlines uh, the anatomy. And of course, it takes care of any uh, surprises, if you like. But that yeah. has been our experience that this pre-workup is most important, as well as what you've illustrated, your patient selection. This patient had a dramatic reduction in blood pressure, and he certainly was the candidate to have, to have his risk reduced by uh, renal denervation. The second thing is, of course, the fact that you have managed to uh, maneuver your uh, catheter, which, of course, is wonderful in terms of its maneuverability because it ensures better contact. Uh, and I think that has made a lot of uh, change, a lot of improve, a lot of uh, impact on the on the energy delivered to the uh, the renal nerves. So perhaps you could just um, uh, share with us uh, what would be your patient considerations when you choose this patient, since you had one such patient in your recent experience. Over to you, uh, right. Right. Yeah, even though we uh, will provide mm -hmm. such an RDNI tube, but, but I think uh, we should consider probably in this figure. Three, factor, three factors. The first is about the blood pressure. We should uh, either got home or ambulate blood pressure to realize the real uh, severity of hypertension. And it, it serves as a good reference after renal denervation that can establish the confidence uh, from, for the physicians who do this procedure. And the second is about a high risk pr profile because in this AICT meeting, uh, all, we have a lot of cardiac patients. They are at high risk. So if they together has a hypertension, we do can consider this renal denervation maybe as a separated procedure or together. And finally, it's about the patient preference. We should ask the patient to let them realize because the awareness of renal denervation is far, uh, well, not optimal. They may not know we have such a choice. They have such a choice. So that's my recommendation to introduce all your cardiac or hypertensive patient about this idea, the, the, this kind of renal denervation procedure. I think you've summed it up very nicely, uh, Prova. I totally echo what your thoughts are. And I think with that, we, uh, we, we, we feel that uh, renal denervation is the way to go in terms of uh, device therapy. Uh, and uh, do you have any final comments, um, Prof Wang, before we finish up the session? Once again, thank you for your contribution and for organizing yeah. this. Yeah, thank you. I, I think if it's a very good session. I, we do want our audience can enjoy this, right? Thank you very much. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you so much, Professor Rossman. Thank you. Bye-bye.